So let's summarize what we covered in this unit. This unit was about the principle of relativity, and we introduced some of the key terms and ideas that will recur throughout the class. So the first of those terms is a notion of an event. An event is just some physical occurrence that we can treat as taking place at a definite point in space and a definite moment in time. You describe an event by its space-time coordinates, and that's just a list of four numbers. The first number is the time at which the event occurs, and the next three would it be its location, x, y, and z. We talked about reference frames. So a reference frame is needed to measure space-time coordinates. So a reference frame, it's a coordinate axis. You need to choose a zero point, and then you can measure in the x direction and measure in the y direction, and you'll need to have clocks um, spaced along the, uh, your coordinates so that you can measure time as well as position. A reference frame can be at rest, it could also be moving, um, and uh, we'll be particularly interested in this course in inertial reference frames. So an inertial reference frame is one in which Newton's first law holds. So that law, often called the law of inertia, that's a law that says that objects at rest stay at rest, objects at motion continue in motion, unless acted on by a net force. As a practical matter, an inertial frame is just one that's at rest or moving with a constant velocity. So observers in different reference frames will often have different space-time coordinates for the same event. And the Galilean transformations allow us to translate from one reference frame to another. So as we have before, we have one reference frame that's moving, um, call that the primed frame at a speed of beta, and then the other reference frame is at rest. So um, x and t would be the measurements in the at rest frame, x prime, t prime, would be the measurements in the moving frame. And this tells us how to convert from one to the other or vice versa. So I like thinking of this as a sort of bilingual dictionary. If you have an X and T measurement, you can convert to X prime and T prime and vice versa. So the Galilean transformations are classical. This is before Einstein. And in classical physics, time is absolute. It's agreed upon by everybody. No matter what frame you're in, time is time. And Newton, um, the way he put it, absolute true and mathematical time of itself and from its own nature flows equably without relation to anything external. So again, I just summarize that as saying time is time. We all agree on time. That's Newton's view of time. And then, of course, there's a principle of relativity. And our final version of this principle says that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. It's important to note that this does not mean that all measurements are the same in all reference frames. We've seen this repeatedly. Anastasia and Beowulf, um, the primed and unprimed frames, record different values for positions and velocities. But what it does mean, the principle of relativity, is that for example, the law of conservation of energy, or the law of conservation of momentum, that holds in all reference frames. So for example, if Beowulf is on a train and is playing pool or billiards, and some balls collide, um, that collision would conserve momentum. If we're um, watching um, that from the ground, and we see the, the, the entire pool table moving left to right, we would record different values for those pool balls as they hit in, into each other. But nevertheless, we would still see that momentum is conserved. So momentum is going to be conserved in any inertial reference frame. Energy will be conserved in any inertial reference frame, and so on. And so what we'll see in the next unit is that this statement and the Galilean transformation statements turn out to be in conflict. And this is what will lead us to Einstein's theory of special relativity. So we've reached the end of Unit 1. Thanks for sticking with it. To be honest, I don't think there's a lot that's deep or surprising in this unit. 
but we need to get through it. We need to build some foundation, some key concepts that we're going to use later on to think about relativity. In the next unit, we're going to think in much more detail about how we would need to synchronize clocks and do so in a way that's consistent with the principle of relativity. And as we'll see, doing so will lead to some interesting surprises that will make us think differently about the nature of time itself. So stay tuned. We'll see you next week.